Sound Speeds. Welcome back to the Sound Speeds podcast. This is episode 21. And I'm going to... I just realized the microphone is in the frame. We're going to fix it and waste no more time and get right into the content. For our first topic, we're going to discuss why low frequencies travel through walls better than higher frequencies do. And believe it or not, it's not because there's more power put into it, even though you may say, well, isn't there? Yes, but when you walk up on a nightclub and you hear boom, 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 you're not thinking, well, that's because you have 100 times more wattage put into the base than the highs, even though that is the case. Here's the thing, though. If you put the exact same amount of power into a mid-range or a tweeter, then you do the base. Guess what happens? The mids and highs travels so much farther and is so much more powerful. As a matter of fact, it can hurt your ears t- quite tremendously if you were directly on axis. Why is that? It's because it takes less power to push higher frequencies to a farther distance. However, on that same note, that's because the higher frequencies are more directional. The lower frequencies are more omnidirectional. So if I put in, let's just say a thousand watts and I angled it in a straight line like this and it's high pitched, then that's going to travel a very far distance. If I put it into something that is more omnidirectional like bass is, it's going to be using that power to go in all directions. This is the reason why you can point your face in the opposite direction of your microphone and you'll hear the bass frequencies a lot easier than you will to hear mids and highs because they spread out more evenly. So if I turn my face exactly around opposite and kept my mouth in the same spot, you would hear the bass in my voice about the same whether I'm facing forward or backwards, more or less. Now, the reason why changing over, the reason why that you hear the bass frequencies more going through a wall than the higher is because think about the wavelength and think about how a low frequency wavelength would be wider than a high frequency. It would be a lot of little bitty, you know, crests and troughs like that. So that means that a low frequency going through a wall, like let's say right here, it would travel through and it would only disrupt part of one little wave, as opposed to if it were a wall like this and your frequency looked like this, it would maybe lose two entire full waves as it goes through that wall. That's part of the reason why. The other reason why is because of the nature of vibration. Vibration would hit the wall. It's going to dissipate a little bit as it goes through the wall, but then the higher frequencies are going to more bounce off of the wall. So it's not going to travel through nearly as well. This is the reason why in another video, I actually did a a talk about STC versus NRC, sounds transmission class versus noise reduction coefficient. Sound transmission class is the ability of some sort of a surface to resist uh, vibration going through it versus in RC, which is the reflected sound, preventing sound from reflecting. So I'll actually post that video right up there if you'd like to check it out. Now, let's compare this now to radio frequencies. Believe it or not, it works the same way in RF. Lower frequencies are going to travel through surfaces better than higher frequencies for the same exact reason. No, they're not omnidirectional. And lower frequencies are not just omnidirectional, but you are losing more of those little waves and they bounce off less when they are lower frequency. So that is basically a nutshell as to the science behind it. The lower frequencies are going to travel through because it's going to lose less energy and bounce less. Now, if you are out in the field and you are pointing a microphone uh, or, or a transmitter rather this way, and it's directionally going straight towards something, let's say it's directional, and you then suddenly chain, uh, you suddenly start having all kinds of RF related issues. One thing that sometimes can help is if you look for a a wall or something to reflect it off of, you can actually pick up and reflect off of another surface to angle back over there. So believe it or not, if you are shooting on a set here and the sound mixer is line of sight, but then the camera decides to look this direction and they're looking right at the sound mixer, the sound mixer can go slightly around the corner. And if your microphone is for some reason uh, omnidirectional, it should pick up you know, evenly the same way. But if it is directional, instead of going straight towards where the mixer would be through the wall, try angling it a little bit upward to try to play off of the wall a little bit. You might get a little bit of a better signal. Believe it or not, that's the case. So think about this and think about the way that RF works and the way that sound works and run some experiments if you want to question that. For our second topic, we're going to discuss ear fatigue or sometimes hearing fatigue. There's different terms for it, actually, but it's all basically the same thing. And that is, if you wear something on your ears for a long period of time, it starts to become exhausting. This is something that sound mixers that are constantly like listening to their to to set just 
with their very critical ear, they can become very, very, I don't want to say hyper aware, but they can become overwhelmed by all the sound. And it becomes very straining on the ear and the brain, because believe it or not, hearing something and trying to listen very deep into something is takes a lot of brain power to do. You have to focus on it because yes, it's there. Yes, you're going to notice it. Even if you don't have the most sensitive of hearing, if you notice something coming through a microphone, you're still going to notice it. And sound mixers have very good hearing as a rule. So if they're listening very deeply into whatever the microphone is pointed at and they happen to hear a sound, their brain is going to process it and say, what is that sound? Can you help me find it? We're going to try to find it, boom operator, and they're going to start looking for it. But in, in the same kind of in the same kind of sense, the more you have it on your head, the more you're going to be dealing with the squeezing of your brain. Basically, your head is being squeezed by the headphones because the the actual band will will compress it. And a lot of sound mixers that don't use inner ear monitors, they will use something that's high noise. So like they'll use the HN uh, 7506s from remote audio, which are basically like very, very heavy duty he uh, helicopter pilot type designs where it compresses your head quite a bit in order to isolate your ear. So basically they're closed back. It's basically plastic. And then the driver sit on the inside. So it's high quality, but it's isolated. And you wear that on your head and it sandwiches your, your head quite heavily. So if you wear those for an extended period of time, it will hurt and it will fatigue your ears and your brain because you're listening to everything very, very magnified with nothing else. Because got to keep in mind, when you don't have headphones on, you hear the world balanced all the way around you. If you put headphones on, the volume may be up higher, might be up lower. You're not hearing what's around you anymore. You're hearing whatever the microphone is that you have currently up. You're hearing that magnified in your head. A lot of sound mixers will wear their their um, headphones up at at least regular type volume. So they might be the regular volume that they speak out of the world around them. They may lower it a little bit. In that case, then they have to listen harder. They have to strain sometimes to hear it in a noisy environment. But it might not be the situation where you have to strain because it goes quiet when you record. Either way, they're having to listen deeper into the to the actual sound itself. And that is fatiguing. It all requires brain power. People always think that that if you are physical and you're expending a lot of energy, that is all it really takes. But believe it or not, your brain expels a lot of calories and a lot of in, uh, energy as well. Just sitting there thinking is extremely exhausting if you are doing it for hours on end. And as a sound mixer, you're taking in everything you hear and you're processing it. The same thing with the boom operator and the sound utility. Boom operator is on set though and is able to dial in on the sound by saying, wait a minute, I point it this way. Wait a minute, what is that sound? And then go in that direction. But a sound mixer is listening and then they hear a sweep and they're like, whoa, what is that sound? And they're going to maybe start wondering about it and thinking about it. And they're going to start programming their brain to listen for that sound because they heard it. And when they, when everything gets quiet and they roll, that's the kind of sound they're going to be thinking about and remembering that they might have heard earlier and they want to make sure it is completely silent. So ear fatigue comes in a few different forms. It could be that they are just focused on that particular sound so much that it is causing a lot of strain and stress. Combine that with the sandwich effect from your headphone band. Combine that also with just the, the idea and concept of wearing something on your head for an extended period of time that is not in your environment. Because as a boom operator, you're pointing a microphone and I can, I can sometimes I'll, I'll point a microphone across the room as if the first idea and the director are talking and it's at the other side of a room during a lighting setup. I'll point the microphone over there and I'll watch them and I'll pick up on the sounds I'm hearing in combination with what I see their mouth do. And that will help me to actually pick out what they're saying. So some people will say, uh, what are you doing? I'll say, I'm listening to the first ID and the director talk. And they're like, you can hear them? I'm like, yes. How can you hear them? It's my superpower. That's how I can hear them. I will tell them straight up it's my superpower. And then I'm like, all right, they're talking about this and this and this and this and this. And I'll relay that so that way they, can, they know what I'm talking about. But it is actually extremely fatiguing. People don't normally think about ear fatigue or anything or hearing fatigue because if they do, it is one of those things where you will become more aware of it and you will start to become very, very aware of it. So now that I mentioned it, you may say, well, I think I have ear fatigue now. It is something very serious for you to think about. You might not know the term or know how it relates to, to the world around you, but if you wear headphones for a long period of time, you will feel pressure, not just on the side of your head, but sometimes on your eardrum as well. On the inside, if you have your headphones up too loud, that can lead to ear fatigue. Normally, as a rule of thumb, what I will do is I will set the volume on my headphones to about the same as it is 
if you are talking. So if I'm a regular speaking volume, I will set my volume on my headphones to be about that volume, not louder, not quieter. If I need to turn it up a little bit because someone's whispering or very, very quiet, I will. If I want to turn it down a little bit because people are yelling, I will do that as well. But as a rule, I will usually set it for about a regular speaking volume. That way it is what you would expect to hear in your headphones. Keeping in mind that a microphone is going to be placed right on top of the actors, and that is the volume that it's going to be set for, that volume, not the volume of the world around you when the microphone is sitting next to you. You can set it that way if you want to, but just keep in mind when you throw the microphone up, it's going to be even louder when actors are speaking into the microphone with it point blank over the top of their head. So just keep that in mind. Aside from that, eardrums, the sandwich effect, all that does affect everything. That is ear fatigue in a nutshell. Short and sweet. So that way you can get back to the real world and do whatever it is that you were doing without having me spend your entire day. Hopefully these little tidbits of knowledge was something that was good for your brain and not fatiguing. So there you go. If you have any questions you would like to ask me to include in an up upcoming episode of the Sound Speeds podcast, then please write them down in the comments below or send me an email at alan at soundspeeds.us. But in the meantime, thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Sound Speeds podcast, and I will see you in the next episode with even more sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.